When you want low end output out of small subwoofers along with nice even flat response, a transmission line enclosure is a great subwoofer box style to select. In a previous video, I walked through the design process for coming up with all of the measurements. And in this video, we're gonna build this actual enclosure. Not only are we gonna walk through the entire construction process, I'm gonna show you step by step how we completed this advanced fabrication that is on the front of the box to give it this cool geometry and this unique look. Let's start building. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and lessons and build log videos like this video. If you're new here and you wanna make sure that you're updated when I release new videos, you can smack that subscribe button and you can of course ring-a-ding-ling that bell. So enough of that guys, what do you say? Let's get started with this build. Before we start building our transmission line subwoofer enclosure, it's good to have a plan in place or a blueprint to work from. Once again, I previously made a video about how to design a transmission line enclosure, but if you're in need of a little bit of help, I can definitely help you out at caraudiofabrication.com. I start any subwoofer enclosure build with first laying out some of my cuts by marking them out on the piece of wood. I like to use 3 quarter inch MDF and a good tip is whenever you're making your cuts on a table saw, try to make all the cuts that are that same size at once. This way all of your similar cuts will be the exact same size and you don't have to adjust your fence on your table saw more than you need to. For this enclosure, I started with cutting the two front baffles along with the back of the box and then I also made the top and bottom of the enclosure. Next I finished up the sides of the enclosure and then I finished up all of my straight cuts with making the final port geometry pieces. This enclosure features multiple different 45 degree corner pieces that go into the corners of the port so now I needed to adjust my table saw to 45 degree Degrees and proceed with making those pieces. So we've got all our pieces cut. Now it's time to do some detail work. One of the first things I'll do for detail work is I start with measuring out a center line on my board. And in this case, I'm working on the front baffle that holds the subwoofer. The reason for the center line is it gives you a good basis to work off of for all the other geometry. Here's a quick tip for you guys in order to mark out the port. What you can do is use a spare piece of wood in order to mark the offsets for the edge of the port geometry. I'm going to be using a woodworking router in order to clean up my cuts and make them perfect. So I start with making some rough cuts about an eighth inch inside of my cut line. If you don't have a woodworking router, I recently made a video about how to build a subwoofer box only using basic tools and you can check that out up in the corner of the screen. I'll be using this Circle Smart template from my show sponsor Mobile Solutions in order to actually make the cutout hole, so I start with using some template tape to stick to the back side of the template and then I stick the template and tape assembly to the workpiece. Over at the router table I grab a flush trim bit and what this bit does is it has a small bearing on top that rides against the template and transfers that shape to the bottom piece, so it's important that I adjust it to the correct height. Once I fire up the router, I can make a cutting pass and go completely around the template shape, and then you can see that I can remove the template, and what this leaves us with is an extremely accurate cut. And you know what? I love me some extremely accurate cuts. To clean up the cuts on the port, I'm gonna be using this tool, and as a quick note, all the links to all the different tools I always use throughout these videos is available down in the video description. Since the front baffle of my subwoofer enclosure is gonna be two layers, I can simply copy this first initial layer to the second layer. I do this by tracing the lines using the jigsaw in order to rough cut, then sticking the two pieces together using template tape and then finally flush trimming them to one another over on the router table. I want my subwoofer to sit down flush within the two pieces so the fact that both of these holes are the exact same size right now is not going to work. In order to solve this problem, what I'm doing is here on the router, I'm using a rabbiting bit in order to cut away some of the material. And you can see that I've adjusted the rabbiting bit about halfway up on the height of the piece of wood. After I flip the piece of wood over, you can see that it leaves me with this step, which I can then eliminate by using the flush trim bit. Completing these steps gives me this oversized hole that the subwoofer can now sit down inside. Now I want to add some interesting shapes and geometry to the front of this enclosure to make it one of a kind, so this is where we're going to start doing some more advanced fabrication work. I want the design on the front of this enclosure to have some symmetry to it, so I'm basing everything off of the middle line that I've drawn earlier, and I'm just using some different shapes and kind of playing with some ideas until I get to a point that I like the shape. You'll notice that these template pieces have holes and slots in them, and that's because they're part of the Axis Shape Creator Kit. So what I can do is I can use those holes in order to insert hardware and lock these different corners together to create my new shape. 
I'll start with transferring this new shape to a piece of quarter inch MDF that's going to be used in order to make my new templates. After sticking the templates to the piece using template tape and using the router, I've created this large female shape. That large shape that I've created is going to be my master shape, but I'm going to transfer it to another piece of quarter inch material, and this time I'm using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit on the router in order to trim the inside away. I do this so that I'll have this male shape that I can use, but it's important to note that the gap between the two pieces, since I use a quarter inch bit, is now a quarter inch wide. Ultimately, I plan to wrap both the inside and outside shapes with upholstery vinyl, so I need to reduce that gap. I'll reduce the gap by increasing the size of the male shape, and I'm doing that by using this oversized bearing with the flush trim bit. This makes a new male shape that is slightly larger, and you can see when we add it to our original master female shape that the gap is now smaller on each side. In fact, we've made it about a sixteenth of an inch on each side, which is perfect for two layers of the vinyl that I'll be using. Now I'm going to transfer that male positive shape to a three-quarter inch piece of material. I'm using a three-quarter inch piece of material because we're going to be doing a cool router trick in order to actually make this into a shape. After we copy the shape, the first step of this process is loading in this huge rabbiting bit. I adjust the height of the router bit so that the cut is about halfway into the material. Next, I make a cutting pass around the outside perimeter. Once we flip over the workpiece, it's going to look something like this. You can see that it's created this step, and I've also drilled a small quarter inch hole next to that step. This hole is so that I can push through a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit, and you can see that I've adjusted it so that the bearing will ride against that edge and it will cut the surface down below. So here's where we're at. By completing all of these steps, I now have a large female piece for my overall opening and I've now created this inside piece as well to give us a little bit of highlight accent geometry. So in the meantime I've done some rough cutting action on the actual piece that's part of my subwoofer enclosure and I'm sticking the female master template to the front of this so that we can copy that shape. Since the shape is the same on both sides I can just flip it over to make the other side as well. The same goes for copying my insert piece so here you can see now we have everything starting to come together. Now this is the point of the project that it's easy to start getting excited but don't jump the gun quite yet. We have some edge profiling to do with some different router bits before we start assembly. We're going to start with this little curvaceous guy right here. Check out this roundover bit. He'll take a hard 90 degree corner on a piece and he'll round it over and make it nice and smooth so it's perfect for the inside port geometry so we're doing it to our port pieces. Next up we have this guy, the handrail bit. Similar to the roundover bit, this gets rid of a hard edge, but this is just a little bit different shape. It has a nice sloping curve. In fact, it's not a very aggressive curve, but it will look great once we wrap this with vinyl. For the inside of my pieces, I'm going to go with something a little bit more aggressive, this 45 degree chamfer. The chamfer bit will give me hard, crisp lines that really stand out. In fact, since I added them to the inside of the insert shapes, I also decided to add it to the inside of the port. Now this is a small rabbiting bit, and I'm going to be using it to make a small notch in the corners of the side pieces of the box. Once the box is assembled, this notch will give me a space to tuck the carpet. I'm also using a slightly larger rabbiting bit in order to add a step on the back side of my insert pieces, and this is so that I have a space to wrap the vinyl around the back side of the edge. So there we have it, all the woodworking is now done on the enclosure. I really like to make sure that I think ahead a few steps just so that we can account for how I'm actually going to finish this box and wrap it with some of the different vinyl materials and that sort of thing. So now, let's move on to assembly. I find that I usually start the assembly process by attaching the bottom piece to the back piece. One of the most important tips I can give you for subwoofer enclosure assembly is to make sure that you completely cover each mating surface with wood glue. For assembly, you can use a bunch of clamps, you can use brad nails, but in the case of this project, I'm going to be using a drill in order to pilot drill each hole and then following it up with a screw. You really want to use the right type of screw, so again, a link to one of the ones that I like to use is down in the video description. After I make each joint, I'll follow up with a bead of wood glue and then I smooth it out using my finger. Next, I'm going to apply one of the side panels of the box, and here's a cool little trick. You can use a scrap piece of wood in order to help you actually line up the surfaces so that you know they're in line with one another. Something else cool to use is this point-to-point -point tool, which allows me to easily have the exact same spacing between the different screws. I realize this might be a little bit obsessive, but I really like the way that even spacing looks. With the side panel added, it's time 
time for some more beads of glue. Now if you remember from the beginning of the video, the port geometry is going to look something like this. I want to draw out all the edges of where the port pieces will be, so this is a super smart tip. Take a piece of scrap wood and cut it to the exact width of the port, in my case five and a half inches, and you can use that piece to quickly draw the geometry. Once all the port offsets are done, you can even stand it up on its end in order to draw the thickness of the port walls. Now I'm not going to be able to see where to line up my screw from the outside of the enclosure, so I'm actually pre-drilling my holes from the inside. This gives me a simple hole to use and line up with once the port wall is placed within the enclosure. And of course, once again, you got to follow up with that bead of glue. Now while I add the rest of the port walls, keep in mind that I can once again use that scrap piece of wood to aid in the assembly. Next, I add the front of the enclosure by applying glue, applying the front of the enclosure, and then screwing it into place. I also need to add these quarter 45s so once again it gets some glue and I'll be using a clamp in order to hold it in place while the glue dries. Now right now I'm thinking that I'm ultimately going to wrap the outer piece of the baffle along with some of the accent pieces with vinyl whereas the rest of the enclosure will be wrapped in carpet so for now I'm not going to permanently adhere these to the enclosure. I'll probably use something like strong neodymium magnets in order to hold everything in place and the inserts will be press fit. Also I'm not going to mount the top of the enclosure quite yet but as you can imagine it's just a matter of applying a bunch of glue and securing it in place with some screws. We'll of course also want to play some music through this bad boy and give it a test so if you guys want to make sure that you don't miss those future videos i would love to have you as a subscriber if you'd like to see what i'm working on between the videos you can also find me on instagram at car audio fab a special thanks goes out to the patreon support team for helping crowdfund the making of these videos john brian ali steven jerry ej emmanuel truman james and colin and the rest of those guys you guys rock thank you everyone for watching